This dairy-free yogurt can potentially help with conditions such as rosacea, SIBO, irritable bowel syndrome, arthritis, and more. It's really not yogurt because it uses strains not used in traditional yogurt, but we're gonna call it that because it looks and tastes like yogurt. And if you want a dairy version, see this video, which I will have linked below. This video is about dairy-free yogurt, however, as I mentioned. But if you choose instead to go with the dairy version, there's almost no lactose in the yogurt because it's fermented for so long. And if you're sensitive to A1 casein, you could also make it with A2 milk. Just a plug for the dairy version if you're not opposed to dairy. That yogurt has been super beneficial in clearing my skin from rosacea, which I experienced after the birth of my son. But we'll use the same bacterial strains in this non-dairy yogurt today, and that's what's important. So you can get the same results with this. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little background on why you might wanna make this yogurt. I'll teach you how to make it. We'll talk about what specific probiotics you can use, and then I'll answer frequently asked questions. Background. Dr. William Davis, a cardiologist, came up with this yogurt. Unfortunately, there are lots of probiotics out there that you can buy that will do nothing for you. So he picked specific strains based on their health benefits, such as l Roydori, that many of us have lost due to antibiotic use, et cetera. Here are some of the potential benefits l Roydori, for example, provides improved muscle mass, weight loss, reduced inflammation, improved sleep, and improved mood. All right, so we've established we're using special probiotic strains to get targeted results, but why not just take the probiotic? We're making yogurt instead because this ramps up the bacterial counts from, let's say, 20 billion to, which is more likely to give you the results you want. How do we make this yogurt? All we're doing is making a coconut milk base that will support the fermentation of the bacterial strains we're gonna add. Now, Dr. Davis's recipes are evolving, so trust me, there are various ones. If you find a recipe in his book, Super Gut, for example, it might be slightly different from one published and updated later on his blog. I'm gonna go with what appear to be the most recent recipes, but if you have a different one, feel free to use that instead. Here's what you need for your coconut milk base. I personally use a coconut milk brand with no additives. This is the one I get from my local grocery store. As far as sugar, don't worry about something fancy here. This is what I'm using. You could use straight up regular old table sugar. This is gonna get eaten by the bacteria in your yogurt. So no need to use honey or anything like that. In fact, the microbes in the honey could actually alter your yogurt. So just use plain old sugar. And the raw potato starch is just a prebiotic fiber that helps feed the bacteria and helps up their counts over this prolonged fermentation. I actually use a different prebiotic fiber, which Dr. Davis uses in many of his recipes. So although it's not explicitly listed in this recipe, I think it's probably an acceptable swap. This is inulin. On Dr. Davis's website, it says to use three fourths teaspoon of guar gum. But in a July 2nd, 2024 video, his description says to use one teaspoon. I use three fourths teaspoon. It really doesn't matter much. This is just gonna make your yogurt a little bit thicker or thinner. I'm bringing this up because people get a little bit testy about the slight differences in these recipes. And Dr. Davis feels guar gum is fine to use. This is all quoted from his website. But if you disagree, and if you don't wanna use guar gum, I've experimented with agar agar, and it works. You just get a much drier, clumpier yogurt rather than a creamy yogurt. So not ideal, but you can do it. So if you wanna substitute agar agar for the guar gum, use the same ratio. If you use 3 4 teaspoon of guar gum, use 3 4 teaspoon of agar agar. Make sure you add your agar agar when your coconut milk is still super hot. All right, let's get our coconut milk base going and then we'll talk about adding probiotics. In a medium saucepan, over medium heat, heat your coconut milk to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius and maintain that for one minute. This is primarily to kill off anything we don't want. Stir in your sugar, potato starch or inulin, and remove from heat. Allow it to cool for five minutes, then stir in three fourths teaspoon of guar gum. Don't worry if it clumps because you're gonna use an immersion or a standard blender to blend it until it reaches the texture of heavy cream. This only takes a minute or two. Then you're gonna allow your coconut milk base to cool to room temperature. You must let your coconut milk cool or you will kill the bacteria you're introducing. 
I do this in the jar I'm gonna ferment in, and this jar has been sterilized, which you don't have to do, but, and truthfully, I can be really lazy about sterilization when it comes to most yogurt making, but for this type of yogurt that's gonna be fermented for so long, you really don't wanna wait all those hours and have your yogurt batch come out ruined. So sterilization is a great idea. Plus we don't wanna multiply a bunch of bad bacteria by a ton. Then just stir in, do not blend, your bacterial source and ferment for 48 hours, not 36 hours, which is for the dairy version. Coconut milk version is 48 hours. Now, what probiotics should you stir in to your yogurt? This depends on which of Dr. Davis's recipes you wanna follow. For example, he has a recipe with only l in which case you would use tablets that only contain l -Roideri. I'll have brands linked in the description box, but for this recipe, you could use 10 BioGaia Gastrus tablets. You'll crush these yourself. Then you'll add them to cooled coconut milk and mix until they've dissolved. And that can take a little bit of time. Or you could use the contents of one capsule of BioGaia Oscritus. I'm sorry if I didn't say that properly. Here you would just dump out the contents of the capsule and stir in until it dissolved. It still has l -Roideri. Or the contents of one capsule of my Reuteri, which is a brand that Dr. Davis now has come out with on his own. Or you could use whatever brand really you want as long as you have the same bacteria in similar CFU counts. Then you would ferment at the correct temperature for this strain. So there are different recipes with different temperatures. For just this strain by itself, you would ferment at this temperature for 48 hours. You could also make SIBO yogurt, which is a different recipe. And this is the yogurt that I made in my dairy video, which uses three different strains of bacteria, including l -Roideri. but it also has B coagulans and l -Gasteri. Here are the probiotics you would add for this recipe. This is different from what's in Dr. Davis's book because this appears to be the updated version, which I got from his website. This yogurt is fermented at 106 degrees Fahrenheit or 41 degrees Celsius. This is not the ideal temperature for each one of these bacterial strains, but it's a happy medium for all three strains. Dr. Davis also has other yogurt recipes based on what you're trying to target. I'll link the page on his website that lists them all. In fact, I'll have lots of links in the description box for you. And just so you know, the first batch might come out with a little bit of separation from the coconut water and the yogurt. That's normal and it will fix itself in subsequent batches. This is my first batch with agar agar. You see a little separation there and my second has none. And this is my first batch with guar gum and it came out just fine. All right, let's try this. I've got some toppings on this, but it is super creamy. This is really good. It tastes just like a creamy coconut yogurt. Take a look at this. Frequently asked questions. How do you keep your yogurt at the correct temperature? Ideally, use a yogurt making device where you can set the exact temperature. I use my Instant Pot, and although it has a yogurt button, it's an older model, so I had to test the temperature with the thermometer and found out that if I make yogurt directly in the Instant Pot basin, it's too hot. But if I make it in glass jars and put those in the Instant Pot, I can keep it at 106 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what I ideally want when I'm making SIBO yogurt, for example. How much do I need to experience benefits? Dr. Davis recommends a half a cup a day, but beyond that, doesn't have recommendations for duration because it's just still unknown. My guess is you're gonna get temporary colonization as that's what most research has found with probiotics from fermented foods. So if you stop eating the yogurt, your symptoms could come back. I like to think of it as a maintenance thing, just like anything that's good for us in life, you can't do it once and have lasting benefits. You have to exercise regularly. If you want the benefits of whole foods, you have to eat them regularly. If you want the benefits of fermented foods like this yogurt, you have to eat it regularly. There's just so much research that still needs to be done on the gut microbiome and how fermented foods like dairy affect it and how long these microbes take up residence. But research shows temporary colonization is common, like one to three weeks, for example. 
Dr. Davis's book lists tons of research studies, so delve deeper, but there's still just so much to be learned. With that said, I also think you have to be aware that we don't know much about the long-term effects of all of these probiotics. So it's not a bad idea to be cautious. And on the other hand, the presence of strains like B coagulans, L gasri, and L reuteri have been around in the human body for tens of thousands of years. So that's a good sign. And this brings me to children. Is this yogurt safe for them? Dr. Davis essentially says probably so, but also we don't know. And why not just drink kefir? You can and you should. Kefir has many different bacterial strains and yeast that are great for your gut microbiome and could therefore help any condition you're trying to treat. But the strains Dr. Davis is using aren't typical in kefir, although that doesn't mean you couldn't find some of them in some kefir somewhere. But kefir is awesome and has more strains than yogurt does, so it's just a great way to boost your health. Lastly, how do you make subsequent batches of yogurt? You don't need to start with crushing pills or pouring capsules again. Just take a bit of your last batch of yogurt, about two tablespoons if you're making another batch with just one can of coconut milk, and stir it into your cooled coconut milk base. You can even take a few tablespoons from a dairy batch and use it to start your next coconut milk batch or vice versa. Best wishes on your health journey. Don't shoot the messenger. Dr. Davis has a lot of resources on his website and in his book. And just know that I can't say all of his claims are true. I think future research is going to determine that. But this yogurt has definitely helped me. Do your own research and remember to eat real food. I'll see you in the next video.